Hey everybody, this is Veronica with Project Food Forest, and I don't have anything in particular to discuss lately, but it's been a while since I've made a video for you, so I'll just take you around some of the ecological benefits of the front garden and show you around a little bit. So, I think one of the first things you notice when you look around in the front gardens is that there's a lot of ombel flowers. There's a lot of yarrow, carrot flowers, um, if you look closer, there's, there's dill flowers, and there's cilantro flowers, and then of course there's mustard flowers, chicory, cornflower, um, the milkweed is still blooming a little bit, but not as it, as much as it was before, it's just kind of towards the end. So, these carrot flowers, I don't know if you can tell really well, um, but first of all, they're gorgeous, but second of all, the wasps love the carrot flowers. And a lot of you are probably thinking, why would I want to attract wasps? And I will tell you that I hang around these carrot flowers all the time and watch the wasps and they do not touch me. Oops, I was trying to get that guy in. They don't touch me, they don't care about me as long as I'm not trying to touch them and I'm not bothering their nests or whatever it is that they need to protect, they're not going to bother me. Um, so you shouldn't worry about them either. And the reason that wasps are good to attract is because most of them are carnivorous or omnivorous. They like flower they need flowers for flight, for the energy for flight, but they eat a lot of insects, particularly pest insects that eat up eat our, our plants that we don't want eating our plants. Um, and a lot of them are also parasitic, parasitoid wasps, which means they will lay their eggs on top of a caterpillar like a um, like the tomato caterpillars. I forget their name right now. Um, they lay their eggs on those caterpillars and then when the eggs hatch, they eat the caterpillars from the inside out while the caterpillar is still ali alive. Um, the caterpillar eventually dies and then a whole new generation of wasps evolves from that. So I don't know if you can see, but these gorgeous flowers are buzzing with life and of course I'll get they're just regular domesticated carrots um, so I will get look at this gorgeous guy so I will get carrot seeds from this I just actually nature mulched it really well for me <laughs> this last fall um, and then the milkweed has been integral in creating an abundant ecosystem. For the first couple of years they were covered in honeydew. So the bottom leaves were all black and really ugly looking but I left them that way um, because they, you know, aphids may eat our plants but they play a very important role in the ecosystem. Their food, the aphids themselves are food but so is their honeydew to many many insects and animals. In, in the ecosystem that you have. So if you kill them, then their predators aren't going to have any food to eat, so you need to keep them alive. Um, so a couple years later, we have hardly any aphids, which is a shame because my youngest son really wanted to see them. <laughs> he wanted to see how they work in an ecosystem. Um, so, so the milkweed has done really well to attract um, ladybugs, long-legged flies, and green lace wings. And then of course uh, my youngest son loves the milkweed bugs and they look like like that. Let me see if I can get a better one. They look like like that. They've got the, there's two different kinds of milkweed bugs but we have mostly those. And then of course these salvia, they need to be trimmed, they're getting kind of ugly now, but we leave those in place because the bees love them. Love, love, love. This is comfrey, it's a great uh, biomass producer.
producer. You just chop and drop it. And I can see we've got it all in with the apple tree too. Just chop it and it produces a lot of nice mulch for other plants. Um, but the bumblebees really, really love comfrey. And then this, this is just a tiny one because it was all shaded, but I've got lots of big borage plants in the back. Borage flowers are a favorite of bumblebees um, and other bees, um, but they're also edible. And the seed is medicinal. Here's some more carrot flowers and there's a gorgeous wasp. Notice how I'm not afraid of it because it's not going to hurt me. There's another pretty one. Okay, and I'm back. There was a little technical difficulty with my camera. So another thing I wanted to point out is that I have water up here. I've had several bird bath malfunctions last fall and this summer. So right now in the front yard, all I've got is this um, homemade bird bath out of a glass pie dish and some rocks and then, you know, homemade wreath bird's nest type thing to add some decoration, but it wasn't necessary. Um, but the birds can stand on this part if they want, but also the rocks provide a perching place for the birds and for the insects. Insects, uh, certain insects do need to drink water. A lot of them get it from the nectar, but I think a lot of them do need to drink water too. Um, so it's important to provide water um, if you want at all to have a thriving ecosystem with beneficial insects that help eat your pest insects. Um, and I think you do because they do all the work for you. You don't have to, see, look at that. The wasp is already interested. And then another thing to note um, is that you'll notice that everything looks sort of messy, um, and that is on purpose. Plants are planted all over the place, in with each other, not in rows generally, um, because that's the way it is in nature. And when you plant things all interspersed, then first of all, pests, it just makes it harder for the pests to eat them. But second of all, it provides a a more varied diet for insects and birds and whatever else comes in it just makes it more natural and so then so we've got this valerian stock here that I'll probably chop down pretty soon um, but I won't go put it in the compost I'll chop it down and just lay it in the mulch with there's so and then we've got so this is the remains of some flowers that I cut and brought to an event that Project Food Forest had a tent at. And I just threw them in there. Sometimes we're trained to think that everything has to be neatly chopped and even mulched, but actually, in order to invite a lot of biodiversity into our garden, we want to make it messier, less neat. Um, and we want to have dead plants laying all over the place because a lot of insects will make a home in there, especially in the winter time. But that mulch is important for a lot of um, things to live underneath. And of course, it keeps the soil moist and cool and helps conserve water and overall just makes for healthier plants and less dirty plants, really. You don't have to wash them as often. So. So that's why you'll notice it's a little bit messier in my garden, but it's that way on purpose. And then also in the fall, you don't have to chop everything down. In fact, it's preferable that you don't chop anything down. Let it stand all winter long, and then in the springtime you, you can chop it down when things start growing. But um, a lot of invertebrates use those stalks as homes to hibernate in the, or they lay their eggs in there, or however their life cycle works for the winter time. So it's important. So that's my uh, thriving ecosystem and I hope you learned a little bit today.